Hello students, welcome to Baiju's IS. Welcome to a session on economy this week wherein we'll be taking up some of the very important articles that have appeared in various business related newspapers and we'll be analyzing these particular articles. For this particular video, the time period that I'll be covering will be from 16th of September to 29th of September 2019 and the articles that I've chosen are from newspapers from Business Line, Hindu, Business Standard, Indian Express, Limit. Let's begin the discussion. The first article is related to the crude oil prices. The article basically discusses why higher crude oil prices are negatively affecting or will negatively affect the Indian economy as of now. Some of the very important points you must understand are 1. Whatever is the domestic requirement or the total requirement of a crude oil in the domestic market, India doesn't produce all this particular requirement. In simple terms, the demand for the crude in case of the Indian market is very very high compared to whatever is domestically supplied. To bridge this particular difference between the demand as well as the supply, India imports the crude from the international market. Now how much of this particular demand is imported by the domestic market? As per the latest figures, more than 80% of the requirement in the domestic market is actually imported into India. That is the first point. Now these particular imports will come from multiple markets. One of the very important sources of this particular international crude imports is from Saudi Arabia. As per the latest figures, 18% of the total imports which are coming into India are coming from this particular country itself. That is the second point. Third point, whenever there is a spike in the international crude oil prices, it will negatively affect the crude imports into India. What do you mean by this? If the international crude oil prices, let's say per barrel, increase from $60 to let's say $70, then this will increase the import bill of the international crude which is imported into India. And apart from this, you also need to understand this, whenever there is a depreciation of Indian rupee, against uh, let's say dollar this will again negatively affect uh, the imports of crude into India. Why does this happen? It happens for a simple reason whenever rupee depreciates against a dollar it means uh, I'll have to spend more rupees to purchase one dollar and when I need to pay for uh, the international crude when I'm importing I'll have to pay more rupees when I import the same amount of a crude into the Indian market. So whenever international crude oil prices spike or the rupee depreciates up, these two factors are going to negatively affect the import bill of the crude. Apart from this, also understand this, whenever the import bill of the crude increases, the expenditure of government of India is also expected to increase. Now what is the connection between the crude price as well as the expenditure of government? Out of the crude, there are multiple components. The most important component are Petrol, diesel, naphtha, kerosene, aviation turbine fuel, LPG, so on and so forth. Out of all these particular components, on LPG as well as kerosene, government of India provides subsidies. I'll repeat the statement. Out of all these particular components, on LPG as well as kerosene, government of India provides subsidies. So basically, when the international crude oil prices increases, or because of a rupee depreciation, the import bill becomes higher. Government of India either has to supply these particular fuels, that is kerosene as well as LPG, either at a higher market prices, or to ensure that the market prices will remain same, government of India has to increase its subsidy. So as a result of this, the expenditure burden or the subsidy outflow of the government of India is also expected to increase. Apart from this, this particular increase in the import bill of the crude is also going to reduce our forex reserves. This is the next impact. The forex reserves, that is basically the sum total of a basket of foreign currencies, gold reserves plus special drawing rights. The sum total of all the three is called as forex reserves. Whenever the import bill of the crude is going to increase, the forex reserves is also going to come down. Next. Whenever the import bill of the crude is going to increase, it is expected that it will lead to imported inflation. That is, the price levels of basket of commodities in the domestic market are going to increase as a result of 
increased import bill of the crude. So these are some of the negative outcomes that are going to be felt by the Indian economy if the international crude oil prices are going to increase or the import bill of the crude is going to increase for India. So citing these particular reasons, this article says that if there is an increase or a rise in the import bill of the crude, then it is a problem for the Indian economy. So this is a basic discussion that is provided in this particular article. Now based on this, let's solve certain questions. First question, consider the following statements. India imports around 80% of its crude requirements. Yes. Second statement, India imports around a third of a crude from Saudi Arabia. Wrong. Uh, as of now, the import from Saudi Arabia is around 18% of the requirement. So the right option will be option A, only one is true. Next question, which of the following are likely outcomes, underline the term likely outcomes of higher international crude oil prices. One, India's CAD will increase. CAD basically stands for current account deficit. Now what is the connection? India imports certain goods and services. India also exports certain goods and services. Now imports and exports are one of the very important components of the current account in the balance of payments. I'll repeat the statement. Imports and exports are one of the very important components of a current account in the balance of payment. And in case of India, the value of imports is higher than value of exports whenever you discuss the concept of merchandise or goods. As a result of this, it is said that India experiences a balance of trade deficit. Now, whenever the international crude oil prices increase, the import value is expected to increase and when the import value is expected to increase, not only the balance of trade deficit will increase, but also the current account deficit will also increase. Now, what do you mean by current account deficit? Basically, in the current account, there are two sides. One side is the income side and the second one is expenditure side. The sum total of income side, if it is higher than expenditure side, I'll repeat it. If the sum total of income side is higher than expenditure side, then we'll call this situation as a current account surplus. If it is vice versa, that is the sum total of expenditure side is higher than the income side, then we'll call this situation as current account deficit, which in a nutshell means because of the transactions that are being recorded in the current account, there is a net outflow of dollar in case of the current account deficit. So whenever the international crude oil prices will increase, India will experience a balance of trade deficit, also current account deficit. So the first point is correct. Second one, higher retail inflation. Yes, as per RBI report itself, it has stated that uh, with every dollar increase in the import bill of the crude, it is going to have an impact on the retail inflation in case of the domestic market. So even the second point is correct. Third, subsidy burden of the government of India increases. This is also true. So the right option will be option D, 1, 2 and 3 are true. Apart from uh, MCQs, I have also given a descriptive question. The Indian economy is vulnerable to geopolitics of oil. Discuss 250 words. Let's go to the next article. This article basically discusses uh, government of India pegging Mandrega wages to inflation in a bid to hike incomes. Now in the last couple of months, you must have heard of this particular discussion. That is, Indian economy is going through a slowdown phase where though GDP is increasing or growing, the growth rate is actually on the declining side. So Indian economy is on a slowdown phase and to reverse this particular slowdown, government of India has taken certain reforms. But you must have heard that these particular reforms which have been taken so far by government of India are going to address only the supply side factors. Whereas uh, one of the reasons why there is a, a slowdown in case of the domestic market is a reduction or a slowdown in the aggregate demand. That is in simple terms, the total demand for goods plus services in case of the domestic market is actually experiencing a declining trend. And when the demand for goods and services decreases or experiences a declining trend, the production of goods and services will also come down. When the production of goods and services will come down, the number of employees which are required will be reduced. In simple terms, employees will be laid off. And when the incomes, wages which are generated in the economy will come down, again the aggregate demand in the market will also 
come down. In simple terms, this is a vicious cycle which will start at this particular point and keep on reinforcing itself. So India is experiencing a slowdown because of this kind of a vicious cycle. Government of India has taken reforms, but these particular reforms are going to address the supply side. For example, government of India has reduced the corporate tax rate. But this is going to only have an impact on the supply side, not the demand side. This is not expected to increase the demand in the immediate future or in the immediate context. Over a period of time, these kind of reforms which have been taken by government of India so far are going to contribute to the growth rate. But immediate requirement for Indian economy is increase or revive the aggregate demand. Now, one of the points that is being discussed in this article is in order to revive or increase the aggregate demand in the domestic market, government of India is thinking of pegging Mandrega wages to inflation. Now, what do you mean by this? In simple terms, Mandrega is a program of government of India, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act under which a certain fixed number of employment days are provided or wage days employment is provided to the people or beneficiaries under this particular yojana. And for having provided labor, wages will be provided to this particular labor. Now, the point of contention here is these particular wages are indexed to CPI AL. Now, what do you mean by CPI AL? Consumer Price Index Agriculture Labor. Under CPI, there are various types of indices. One such index is CPI Agriculture Labor. This is calculated by or published by Labor Bureau or Ministry of Labor. And to calculate this particular CPI AL, we are using a base year of 1986-87. Now various experts are saying, one, the base year that we have taken is a very old base year. So you'll have to change the base year to the present context. And very recently, the Ministry of Labor has stated that they are going to change this particular base year to latest base year, most probably 2018, 2019. Second point, when this was taken as a base year and various parameters or various items were covered under this particular calculation, majority of the weightage was given for food commodities. I'll repeat the statement. When this is taken as a base year and we calculate CPI AL, majority of the weightage which are covered under this particular CPI AL is given for food commodities or food which is consumed. But over a period of time, rather than having higher expenditure on food, the households in a rural India are also spending on services such as education, healthcare, etc. These kind of expenditures or the parameters are not covered or even if they are covered, appropriate weightages is not provided as per the base year of 1986 and 87. So the experts are saying you will have to change one base year and also you will have to consider these kind of expenditures which are incurred by the rural people now or rural households now. Now, keeping these particular factors in mind, Minister of Labor has stated that they are going to change the base year as well as look into the basket also. But having said so, various experts also have pointed out one more issue with respect to linking of Mandrega wages to inflation. Now, what is this particular point they have mentioned? They are saying that the average Mandrega wages paid as of now is somewhere around 178 rupees plus. Whereas, the recommendation of various ministries or various experts with respect to the minimum wage slab for India has been more than 300 rupees. So there is also need to look into what should be the average labor which is paid under this particular yojana. But having said so, understand this. By linking this particular Mandrega wages to inflation, no doubt that the wages of the labor is going to increase. It is expected to revive the aggregate demand in the market. But various experts have also cautioned that these particular supply of income or handing over money into the hands of the people directly like this may also fuel inflation in the market. So the government of India has to play a balancing role in this particular situation in order to ensure that there is a reviving of the aggregate demand and also ensuring that 
by giving money into the hands of the people or the households, uh, they will not end up fueling inflation in the retail market. So this is the crux of the discussion given in this particular article. Now based on this, let's have a look at a question. Consider the following statement. CPI AL is used to index Mandrega wages. Yes, it is true. For the calculation of CPI AL, 86, 87 is used as a base year. As of now, this is also correct. So based on this particular analysis, option C, both the statements are true, is the right option. Now let's look at the next article. This is related to the reforms which are taken by Government of India so far. Basically, this article has discussed that Government of India has announced multiple rounds of economic reforms. But these particular reforms, whatever have been announced, are going to address only the supply side factors in the economy and are not going to have any impact on the demand side factors. And right now the situation is that the slowdown in case of the domestic market is because of a reduction in the aggregate demand. Hence, Government of India should take certain reforms which are going to affect the aggregate demand or revive the aggregate demand. Now, what do you mean by reviving the aggregate demand? For example, in the previous article, we have discussed that one of the ways of reviving aggregate demand in the domestic market is by increasing the wages. Will this lead to higher aggregate demand in the market? Yes. Another very important point that is being discussed by various experts in order to revive the total demand in the market is by reducing the income tax rates. Now, by reducing the income tax rates, no doubt government of India will be able to add to the aggregate demand in the market. But the concern here is multifold. The concern here is already government of India has reduced the corporate tax rates. As a result of this particular reduction of the corporate tax rate, it is expected that the government exchequer he is going to forego in the form of a tax revenues this year. Upon this, the GST collections are also not meeting the expected targets. Now, in this particular situation, if government of India reduces even the income tax rates, then the revenue mobilization of government of India will be affected. And when revenue mobilization of government of India gets affected, the fiscal deficit targets either have to be revised or there will be certain control on the expenditure side. Now let's assume there is a control on the expenditure side. That is government of India in order to meet the fiscal deficit target reduces the expenditure and meets the fiscal deficit. This is also a problem. Why it's a problem? Since there is a slowdown in the domestic economy, the private sector investment will be on a lower side. Then the expenditure in the market or the investment in the market has to be taken care of or has to be done by government of India. Now if revenue mobilization comes down, expenditure also comes down, don't you think there will be a limit on how much investment can be done or could be done by government of India to revive the slowdown in the market. So this is a problem with respect to reducing the income tax rate. The article discusses all these particular issues. Based on this, I have given you a descriptive question. How effective are the reforms announced by the government in the reviving the economic slowdown? Discuss 250 words. The next article is related to GST rationalization. Now to understand this particular article, you will have to look at the overall picture. Now what do you mean by overall picture? Government of India every year announces a budget. Within the budget, government of India basically lays down how much expenditure has to be incurred and to incur this particular expenditure how much revenue mobilization will also be done and usually what you see is the expenditure that is proposed by the government is higher than the revenue mobilization as a result of this government of India basically proposes a fiscal deficit and to bridge this particular fiscal deficit government of India will go for market borrowings this is the first point Second point, out of this particular revenue mobilization, government of India will target mainly the taxation revenues. Within the taxation revenues, there is a direct taxes as well as indirect taxes. Right now, the most important component of indirect tax is what? GST, goods and services tax. And most important components of direct tax is corporate tax and income tax. We'll begin the discussion of the points given in the article based on what if we have discussed so far. Please understand this. Post the implementation of GST, various experts have noted that 
government of india or to be more precise the gst council should go for rationalization of the gst structure what do you mean by gst rationalization the idea for gst is one nation one indirect tax but right now what we have seen in terms of gst implementation is rather than having only one tax gst council has multiple tariffs or multiple slabs under the gst for example we have a slab of 0% 5% 12% 18% and also 28% these are the slabs some of the very important slabs under the ambit of gst experts have basically said that in order to boost the automobile sector the gst applicable on the automobile sector has to be reduced yes the demand for automobiles can be boosted if the market prices are reduced by reducing the gst rate but gst council has basically rejected this particular proposal their counter argument is if i reduce the gst rate on the automobiles for me the revenue mobilization will get affected or in simple terms the gst revenues will come down and when the gst revenues will come down the total revenue mobilization will also get affected second over a period of time various experts also have stated that these number of slabs will have to be reduced for example various experts have pointed out that 12% slab and 18% slab should be merged and you should have a single slab of 15% and this was proposed even by the government last year but over a period of time even government of india has given up this particular idea of rationalizing the tariffs under the gst as of now what is the argument there government of india basically says yes there is a need of rationalization of the gst no doubt but presently or in the present context there are certain problems what are the problems one the direct tax collections have not increased by the appropriate rate so when the direct tax collections have not increased by the faster pace or expected rate the total collections of revenue will come down first point second point gst collection itself is not increasing rather in the last month of september we have collected one of the lowest gst revenues in the last 18 to 19 months so gst revenue collection itself is under pressure because of various issues such as tax evasion third point if i merge 12% and 18% and form a new slab of 15% no doubt it is a trend towards the rationalization of the gst a good move nevertheless but the problem is the number of articles which are covered under 18% slab is very very high compared to number of articles which are covered under the 12% slab so when i merge 12% and 18% to form 15% on few articles i will collect more gst but on huge number of articles i will be collecting lesser amount of gst as a result of this further gst revenue collection is going to come down how much as per one survey if 12% and 18% slabs are merged to form 15% slab the total revenues of gst which will be foregone by the government will be more than 1 lakh crore rupees annually so keeping in mind all these particular concerns government of india has basically stated that yes there is a need of a rationalization in the gst structure but right now the total revenue mobilization is under pressure there is a huge tax evasion which is happening because we have not introduced a receipt matching system and gst revenues collection as such have become very lower looking at all these particular features government of india stated that the gst rationalization will be undertaken after some time not in the immediate future these are some of the points discussed in this particular article now the next article is related to fiscal crisis which has reached the doorstep of the states now what are the points given in this particular article first point the central government under the constitution of india is empowered to impose and collect certain types of taxes best example income tax corporate tax etc but whenever these kind of taxes are collected by the central government these are usually put in a fund called as divisible pool of taxes and from the divisible pool of taxes certain part will go to center 
or consult fund of the center and the remaining will go to states and whatever amount goes to the states from the amount individual states will be given the allocation. Now in what ratio this particular DPT will be distributed between center and states amongst the states this will be the recommendation given by the finance commission. Now within this very recently central government has reduced the corporate tax rates. As a result of this particular reduction in the corporate tax rate it is expected that the government exchequer is going to collect lesser amount of corporate taxes. How much lesser? 1.45 lakh crore rupees. This is the first point. Second point within this. Of this 1.4 lakh crore rupees, which would have been collected if corporate tax rates were not reduced, some part would have gone to all the states put together. How much? As per the 14th Finance Commission recommendation, 42% of the usual pool of taxes should have gone to the states. In simple terms, if this taxes were collected, that is 1.45 lakh rupees were collected if the corporate tax rates were not reduced. From this, 42% would have gone to states collectively. That could come somewhere in the range of 60,000 crore rupees. So in simple terms, what I'm trying to say is this. Though the central government has reduced the corporate tax rates, some of this particular burden of revenue foregone will be put on the states also. How much? 60,000 crore rupees plus. As a result of this, the states, one, will have to either increase their fiscal deficit target or reduce their expenditure. I can understand this. I'll repeat the statement. Because the states are collecting 60,000 rupees lesser because of the reduction in the corporate tax rate by the central government, either they will have to revise their fiscal deficit target or they will have to reduce their expenditure. Now please understand, central government incurs capital expenditure and state governments will also incur capital expenditure. But of the total capital expenditure, two-thirds of the capital expenditure comes from the state governments itself and remaining one-third comes from the central government. So if the revenue mobilization for the states is affected and if the state government wants to control the fiscal deficit, then the way forward for the state government will be to cut down on the capital expenditure because revenue expenditures are very difficult to be controlled. So this is one point which is being discussed in this particular article. Now uh, added to this, furthermore evidence has been given to the fact that state governments are feeling the financial pressure. This particular article states that tax revenue in 16 major states has declined or has contracted by around 7% in the first 4 months of this particular fiscal. I'll repeat the statement. The total tax revenue which is collected by the states has contracted by around 7% in 16 major states in the first 4 months of this particular fiscal only. Which basically indicates again the fact that the states are facing a lot of financial pressure and upon this the GST revenue collections have also declined. As a result of this the GST revenue that is going to the states has also come down. No doubt that the central government will provide a compensation to the states that is 100% of the revenue which has been lost or which has not been collected by the states will be provided in the form of compensation by the center to the states. But there are two very important things to note here. One, states will not keep on getting compensation till perpetuity. That is in simple terms. After five years of implementation of GST, the states will not be getting any kind of a compensation. First point. Second point, the center in order to provide compensation to the states imposes a compensation cess. But the compensation says which is being collected as per the latest figures is not sufficient for the central government to pay for the compensation for the states. That is the second concern which has been raised in this particular article. And the sum total basically the article says that because of various macroeconomic changes that are happening, the financial pressure has also reached the state level. This is the gist of the article given here. 
So these are the various articles as well as the questions related to these particular articles for this particular respective time period. Thank you. Have a good day.